But can we start to understand this? That if you're getting cancels, you're getting drop-offs at the highest level from a strategic point of view, it's because you've stopped selling the thing that they want. Let me give you two more examples closer to home. So a couple of years back, I go into a clinic on the East Coast somewhere, wherever it was. Guy, the PT, so picture the scene, treatment bed, 15 year old kid, comes in four weeks after a compound fracture, tib fib compound fracture. Kid lays down on his front. Mother sits on a little chair. I'm here watching, observing. Physio starts to massage his leg and do various shit with scar tissue. And he looks at the mother and said, um, three, uh, three visits a week for four weeks should, should fix this, right? Literally, this is the words that come out of, of his mouth. Three visits a week for four weeks, uh, or for eight weeks should fix this. And the mother said, will insurance cover that? And he said, no. But if it doesn't, we'll just drop it down to one. We'll just drop it down to one, right? The fuck? How does that happen, right? So I'm watching this conversation go back and forth, and the mother says, so what are you going to do for me, son? He's 15-year-old. Well, I'm going to get rid of this swelling, and I'm going to get rid of this edema, and then I'm going to stretch his Achilles, and I'm going to get his foot moving. All right. Physio goes off to the other side of the room to get some, we're in a big gym-like place. Physio goes off to the other side of the room to get some uh, thing to, to massage his leg with or whatever. And I said, oh, just to let you know, I, I used to work in professional soccer. So I actually ran on the pitch to one of these. I heard the crack, and I hoped to God it was the shin pad, but it wasn't. His leg was out, and there was blood everywhere. And this kid who was 20 at the time was almost like unconscious. He was in that much pain. I said, and just to let you know, when I rehabbed this exact injury, I saw that guy three times a day for 30 minutes. I said, because the biggest problem that this kid's going to run into is re-injury. Tell, tell me what your son does. And she said, oh, he's a lacrosse player. I said, oh, is, is he good? Yeah, yeah, we've got hopes for state and you know, all of this level kind of competition. I said, oh, well, um, I said, the biggest problem he's probably going to run into is, is potentially the other leg, the Achilles tightening, ankle sprains, back problems, especially because he's 15. Is he growing? Yeah, he's grown a lot. Oh, well, de he's definitely going to have these muscles that are stretching. So now he's got no balance. Now we, uh, you know, he may get back in a few weeks or a few months or whatever, and he may be playing lacrosse again, but he's a severe injury risk. And do you like going to lacrosse? I love going to lacrosse to support my body. All right, well, what if he gets injured again? I don't want that happening. Maybe you, maybe you need to have them sessions. Physio comes back. I, I think we'll have the three sessions a week. Oh, physio, um, I'm glad you changed your mind. What was I selling? Fucking outcome. Not getting rid of edema and swelling and increasing the kid's range of movement. I'm selling the fact that if this kid wants to be a state level lacrosse player with the least risk of re-injury that is possible, he needs to have three sessions a week. Because by the way, that's what she fucking wanted. That's what she was there for in the first place. And the very fact that her self-worth is tied to her son playing every week is an even bigger motivation, probably the biggest motivation for the three sessions a week. Now all of a sudden she's not bothered about insurance. You following the story? Stopped selling what the patient wanted to buy was the reason for what would have been a drop off. This is happening in your conversation every single day. With, if you've got staff, it will keep you awake at night if you listen to some of these conversations. The way that you can help them is to figure out how to bring it back to this. Why did they come in the first place? That's the outcome that they want. Once you get that, these three steps become very easy. You'll know there's a drop off at this level. If this lady or this guy does a good job, hand the baton over figuratively. This person drops the baton because they start selling 
I'll get rid of edema. I'll get rid of swelling. I'll increase range of movement. We'll put you on this machine. I'm sure all of that's fine, but it's not what I want to pay $2,000 for. The minute that you make me think, I'm not buying, ever. Or at the very least, I'll stall, which is what I actually will do. But then, most people won't follow up. To limit the amount of follow-up that you need to do, to limit the amount of calls that you need to make to get people back on schedule, just ensure that you're selling the thing that they want to buy. Thanks for watching this video. And if you found it helpful, and if you now find yourself thinking, I wonder what else this person can help me with, head over to paulgoff.com forward slash books, where you can find my best selling books, which will show you how to add more profit to your practice. Or send an email to paul at paulgoff.com to ask about how we can help you accelerate the growth and profitability of your clinic. And by the way, if you know anybody who would find this helpful, please share this video out. Thanks so much.